Hello everybody, this is Jaren from MarinaandReef.com. Today we're going to do a little bit of a different video. We brought on some more of the Marine and Reef team. We have... Brett. Nice to meet you. Amy. Yes, and Brett is part of our product support team and Amy is our warehouse manager. Um, so what we're going to do today is just going to look at some water pumps. We have lots of pumps. I'm sure Amy can tell you exactly how many and where they are in our warehouse. But I know when you're picking out a pump, it can get kind of confusing. You know, how much should you spend? What's good? What's bad? What's right for you? So with that, we're just going to take a look at some of these. Um, these are some pumps that I picked out that are some of my favorites. And we'll see what everybody has to say about them. Um, first off, this is a Lifeguard Quiet One 2200. While this isn't a very glowing recommendation, I would generally describe this as the cheapest pump I would consider using. Um, anything that's less expensive than this, I wouldn't trust keeping the animals that I love alive. But I would feel perfectly happy with this. I actually have probably four to five of these pumps myself and meter reactors, I'm mixing salt water um, in a little nano tank that I have and I've been very impressed with them. Um, these are just under $65 at Marine and Reef and they're good for um, tanks with a single one inch drain. Um, We'll go ahead and hand it on off to, to Brett to see what he has to say about it or what he thinks. I do like the lifeguard. Um, the one thing, the major drawback I would say about this is actually the bottom side. I'm not a big fan of the actual contact pad itself. To me, this would just add a lot of vibration to the tank. Um, you seem to have a little bit of experience with it. Do you get a lot of vibration or noise from this? Uh, basically, you know, we kind of joke here that maybe these shouldn't be the quiet one pumps. Maybe they should be the, the noisy one pumps. Yeah. Um, I, I think in fairness to them, they are quiet. They're just not silent. Uh, the quiet one pumps um, are an AC pump. With any AC pump, the majority of your noise is going to come from vibrations. So Lifeguard does have some pads in the bottom, but it's very minimal. And one thing you'll notice is as you move up to some nicer pumps, there's going to be more attention to the sound reduction. Um, I found that if you set this on a mouse pad or a piece of foam or even a silicone drying mat as I've used, it'll greatly reduce the sound, as well as using flexible hose versus PVC pipe. If you connect hard PVC pipe to one of these, the whole pipe's going to vibrate all the way up to the tank. It makes a lot of noise. Um, these pumps can also be installed externally, and if you're installing them externally once you take the grate off, um, you can do soft plumbing on the inlet and outlet, rather than um, just the outlet of the pump, and that definitely does help quiet things down. So what is the benefit of actually running the pump externally versus uh, internal? Just like we'll discuss later, one of the biggest uh, benefits to external pumps is going to take up less room in your sump, it's also going to produce less heat. Okay. So uh, you know the pump is going to heat up. If it's inside the sump, the heat goes directly to the water. If it's outside, it's going to go directly to the air. And actually, every single pump we have today can be installed externally. Though we find most people prefer internal installations just because it's simpler, there's less chances for things to leak, and it's usually what we recommend to beginners. Um, so Amy, I know you've seen these in the boxes in the warehouse. Do you have any thoughts about it at all? Um, no. No? <laughs> I know I pull a lot of the impellers commonly, and sometimes when I do answer the phone, it's a typical something that's wrong with the impeller that's it's wrong. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. Yeah, the impellers really are the only real replaceable part for these pumps. I think we have volutes as well. Um, what I generally tell people is um, the lifeguard pumps come with a one year warranty. I expect something's going to go wrong in about twice the warranty period. So with a cheap pump like this, it's affordable, but a good option. By two years, something's gonna go bad. It's probably gonna be the impeller. We do have the impellers. Maybe it's worth keeping an extra on hand. Maybe it's worth um, just being ready to add them to your cart when it's time, but they are replaceable. All right, so our next pump we have here is this Rossmont Riser Return Pump. This is the pump that I usually um, kind of point out to customers that are looking for something in mid-range. They're not wanting to spend a whole bunch of money, but they're wanting something a little bit better than the Quiet One pump we showed you earlier. Right now, Rossmont makes this pump in one size. It's an 850 gallon an hour pump. This is good for most aquariums with two one inch drains, which would pretty much be any standard aquarium over 100 gallons, even up to 300, this would be a good pump for. Um, or if you have a custom tank with an inch and a half drain, this would be a good sump return pump. Um, there's a lot of things I really like about this pump. 
Um, it's made in Italy. It comes with a two-year warranty, which is twice as long as the Quiet One Pump. It's quieter than the Quiet One Pump is, and you can also control it through Rossmod's waiver controller if you want to. Um, so, but with that, we'll go ahead and hand it on over, see what everybody thinks about it. First initial thoughts of this is I definitely do like the size of it. It is definitely a lot smaller in comparison to the quiet one. But um And it's more flow. You definitely got more flow. But I do like the actual bushings on here. They went overboard more above and beyond in my opinion. And from what I understand, these are actually really easy to take the impeller out, and that's the only thing that would go wrong with it, but not anytime soon. Yeah, just like the quiet ones, really the only part that's gonna go bad with most pumps is the impeller. There are available impellers. Um, we've had one of these on one of our office tanks for a little over a year, year and a half, and it's worked fine with no problems. And as you pointed out, um, the rubber silencers on the bottom, this noise absorption, is significantly oh, better yes. than the quiet one. Um, and that's really what's gonna help this pump stay a lot quieter. Um, it is an AZ pump, so AZ pumps make some noise to vibration, but the one that we've had, it, doesn't bug me at all. It's not something I would hesitate to have in a living room and nobody here has commented on it. I think most people will be very happy with this. Um, one more thing, it's a hundred bucks. So when you think of 65 bucks for the quiet one, this is a hundred bucks. That's what that price difference gets you. They get you something just to, good to build. Better, better build quality. Yeah, better build quality, built a bit better. Um, Amy, you got any thoughts on it at all? Did... It is absolutely so rare that I pull any parts for this. It seems like last forever. I mean, I think I've pulled, well, we've had these for like three years or so, and I've pulled one replacement part. Yeah. <laughs> So Amy definitely knows the parts because, you know, stock in the warehouse, we see what comes in and out. And we just don't sell the parts. And while I'd happily sell you some parts, the fact that we're not having to sell you guys replacement parts is just a testament to how this pump does last longer. Um, and that's something I want. Um, it's a life support system. I don't want it dying and my animals being at risk. So it's something I do appreciate. Um, I also know the chief engineer of this pump, and there's just a lot of little details I think are just awesome. Things like the inlet is specifically designed so you can't get your finger caught in it. It's divoted out just a little bit so you can't do that. Um, it's also more resistant to clogging with material. Um, it's internal and external, just a lot of detail and it's a nice pump. Again, especially for those looking for that mid-range, not super expensive and not the bottom of the barrel. It's mid-range with controllability. Yes. Um, we do have some other videos about the Rossmont controller, the waiver. We're going to encourage you to reference those if you're wondering how you could control this through Wi-Fi in the future. All right, so we talked about our Quiet One pump, which is kind of our budget option, the Rossmont pump, which we see as the midline option. It's not super expensive, but it's definitely a lot better. We're going to look at some of the best options, and we're going to throw out that best is kind of hard because best for what? And there's different applications and different things can be best for. But these pumps are two to three times as expensive as even the mid-range option but they have some real world advantages to doing that. Um, so the first one we're gonna look at is this Reef Octopus Varios pump. Um, this is the Varios 4. This is again the size I would recommend for people looking for a return pump for any tank with two one inch drains or a single inch and a half. It's gonna be most things 100 to even 300 gallons are standard. Some custom tanks have a little bit different setup. Um, what's nice about this pump is it's a DC pump. And DC pumps have a few advantages. Um, the biggest advantage to me is they are really, really quiet. Um, I actually have the biggest version of this pump on my home tank, the Varios 8, and I cannot hear it when I'm sitting in you know, my living room. I can't hear it at all. If I open up the cabinet and lean in next to it, I can hear it, but otherwise it's completely silent. So if you're the kind of person who really has no tolerance for any noise, you're not going to find anything quieter than one of these pumps and you're going to pay a little bit extra for it but it's probably worth it to you um, also because it's dc it's going to have a control box included this will let you speed up and slow down the pump at the control box as well as pause it for feed modes and what's cool about these reef octopus is they include a float switch which will automatically shut off the pump if your sump water level drops which is just a good redundant feature in case a tube popped off and it was pumping stuff into your living room. It'll turn it off when it senses that. Um, 
I've been happy with these overall. Um, let's see what everybody else thinks about them. Um, Brett, have you used these at all? Do you have any experience? I have not personally used any of these, but I do have a lot of friends in the hobby that do run these pumps. Um, every person that I know that actually has one of these pumps, they really enjoy it. They haven't had a single issue. As you were saying, these are probably some of the quietest pumps on the market. Um, the cool thing that I personally like about it though, on the controller is the feed mode. I like the feed mode just because there's a lot of times where I feed my own tank and I actually turn off my pumps, but it'd be a lot nicer if I could set it so it would turn back on in 15 minutes. Um, that is one just great feature of having a controller with a DC pump, um, and that's something I really do like about the uh, the Barrios 4. Yeah, um, one other thing I'll point out, I just kind of thought of it as we're talking, there's actually a Varios 2 in this BioCube behind us, um, and, and I can't tell it's on. We have a cooling fan that's louder than the pump itself, and as this is our break room, when the refrigerator is on, it's louder than the pump. It's just going to be very quiet overall. Um, do you have any thoughts on these, Amy? Why is it important to have a controllable pump? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So there's many things you could do. Some of these things you pointed out, like Brett really likes that feed mode, so that way when you're um, when you're feeding your fish and you feed them food, food doesn't just get filtered out. I mean, exactly. we paid money for that food. We want the food to get into the corals' mouths mm -hmm. and the fish's mouths. So by turning off the pump, we let it go in there. And if you're like me, you're just not going to remember to turn the pump back on, and then you're going to run into your own problems. Yep. Uh, so the feed mode that automatically shuts the pump off for 10 minutes and then turns it back on automatically um, is a good way to pour the food in and then you can walk away and know it's going to restart fine. Um, another thing is if you're worried your pump is too big, a lot of people, which pump should I get? I pick one that's too big, I'm mean, just going to waste money, it's going to use more power and be louder. Well, because you can electronically dial down this pump, if you're worried the pump is too big, you just press the down button, pump goes down, you use less power then, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, if you know you're gonna upgrade, so you have a small tank and you think in a year or two you're gonna want something bigger. Might as well go with the Yeah, power. yeah, run it on 50% power and then when you upgrade, just press the plus button, run it a little bit um, higher. Um, and then we're kind of thinking all in the return pump vein, um, but both with the, the riser pump and the Varios pump, you can definitely use these as a closed loop pump. And uh, we don't see a lot more closed loop pumps nowadays. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's using the pump pretty much just for circulation. Yes. Or rather than having the pump sit in a sump, you're going to have a, a bulkhead or fitting in the side of the tank or bottom of the tank, sucks in and just pumps back out. Um, with those, you can create really cool wave modes. You can use the, the waver from the riser pump to create pulsing and surging and alternating back and forth. And you can do the same thing with the Varios. Um, the Varios does have a connection in the bottom to connect it to an Apex controller. And that'll let you ramp it up and down, program it throughout the day to do all kinds of different things if you're using it for circulation. Um, this is kind of an advanced case usage, but this is an advanced pump. That's who it's there for. I've heard the DC pumps can actually help with electrical savings. What's the difference, like, with the AC and how does that happen? Yeah, so it, my wife came to me a few months ago and <laughs> said, how much power is the tank you and saw our electric bill climbing up? And, as a reefer, you're like, oh crap, yeah, you know, <laughs> what are you going to do? So, put one of those meters on my tank, and it's very common. My tank at home is a 100, 120 gallon tank, and it's costing about 40 bucks a month in power. So, electrical savings are a very real thing in this hobby because oh, yeah. you're not just paying up front, you're paying down the road. And in general, DC pumps are going to be a significant energy savings over comparable AC pumps. What you will find is that with some of the higher quality AC pumps like this Rossmont, it's not a big difference, but where it turns into a big difference is when you turn it down. If you wind up having to turn this Rossmont pump down, it really doesn't reduce the power that much. Um, it will if you use the waiver controller, but if you use a valve on it, it's not going to reduce the power consumption. Whereas with the DC pump, when you dial that controller down, um, it's going to draw that power consumption down as well, and you won't have to be paying that in your monthly bill. Um, another thing to keep in mind is with less power, there's less heat. So, you know, here we're based in the desert, that heat turns into chiller running yep. more or air conditioning running more, which leads to even more, more bills. energy <laughs> bills. So, it's nice to reduce heat whenever you can, and this can be one of the biggest selling points for these Varios pumps. Um, for me, the pump I had before I upgraded to my Varios 8, 
used roughly about 50 watts of power more but that 50 watts of power all the time for an entire year it adds up, um, it adds up. And i remember doing the savings and you'll save you know over the course of five years almost the full value of the pump just because you're not paying that in your electrical bill all right so the last pump we have here is this Milwaukee. Um, this is an American Milwaukee Model 40. This is probably the most common size we're going to recommend to customers and it's, it's a bit of a wild card because you are seeing fewer people use these. Um, I'll just kind of say why I brought this to the table is something I want to look at. Um, years ago when I was working at a fish store, we installed a lot of Milwaukee pumps because 20-30 years ago, that was pretty much all there was. <laughs> there was none of these new DC pumps, This the Milwaukee was kind of it. And um, what we found is we'd install these pumps and we'd come back to some of these customer tanks 15, 20 years later and the pump would still be going. And then we'd ask the customer, did you ever clean it? And they'd say, no. And there's really not another pump on the market that you could say you could not clean it for 20 years and it'd still be going. Um, these pumps are old school. I mean, they've been around for 20 years. It's how, they, how we know they work for that long. So it's, it's bigger than some of the competition. Um, these are also going to be a little bit noisier than some of the competition, um, but they're just insanely durable. Um, the other thing to point out now is the reason why these were some of the first pumps we started using is they weren't really for aquariums, they're for other industries and they brought them over. So Awaki is a pump manufacturer who makes pumps and some of the pumps they so happen to make are aquarium pumps, whereas a lot of these other manufacturers are aquarium manufacturers decided to make a pump. And in this case, these Iwaki pumps are also used things for like pumping industrial chemical fluids. So while a lot of pumps we have, they may say they're rated to pump seawater, um, this could be rated to pump acid or a sodium hydroxide base solution or something crazy. And that's why they hold up very well in the, the mild environment of, you know, a saltwater reef tank. Um, I've installed these Model 40s before and they do produce noise, but I don't typically get complaints about them. All of the other options are going to be quieter than these, um, but they do have some advantages. Um, have you used these at all, Brad, or do you have any thoughts I, about them? I have not used an Iwaki before, but one thing I do like is the fact that it is only mounted externally. Yeah. Um, I think that is a really cool feature of it, but the fact that it is beyond reliable and proven, I mean, you have you ran into customers that have had this yeah. for 20 plus yeah. years, um, that is something to think about. Yeah, I know, Amy, you were back in the warehouse pulling parts. Do you find me move a lot of these at all, or are the parts? We, it goes on and off, but yeah, they, they do, but the parts, not really. Like, I've taken those apart, and they're extremely easy. Just clean it out and rip it back together. Yeah, they're nice, and like Brett said, they are external only, so it is a consideration if you're not wanting to go external. Um, one of the big things with these pumps is a lot of people now will say, they're way less energy efficient than, you know, a modern DC pump or even some of the new AC pumps. Um, one of the to keep in mind with these pumps is they also have way more head pressure. So for those of you who don't know what head pressure is, the way I explain it to people is, you know, if you take a 500 horsepower sports car and you chain it to a tree, it might not pull it out. Yeah. But if you put a 500 horsepower truck and chain it to a tree, it might just rip it out. And, and the difference is that some vehicles and some pumps are designed just for max flow. There's gonna pump flow as fast as they can go. They'll outperform this as far as flow goes. But as soon as they encounter any resistance, anything making the flow more difficult, they just peter out really fast. And the Iwaki's not that way. So if you're pumping through a nuclear canister filter, or if you want a pump that sits in your basement and pumps all the way back up to the first or second story floor, or if you have a pump that pumps through a whole bunch of media reactors with media stuffed in it resisting the flow, um, the Iwaki is not going to degrade in flow as much as any of these other options. And um, for that reason, it's really great for those applications. Um, we're going to put this as the best with the wild card. If you want a quiet pump in your house, this probably isn't it. If you want something that just won't break, um, this is a good option. One last thing I'll point on out since we're talking about this high-end AC pump versus this high-end DC pump is generally AC pumps are more reliable than DC pumps. Um, you're just going to have less problems, but you're going to sacrifice some of the other things. So one thing I noticed earlier when we were looking at the Varios is the Varios has a two-year warranty, but it doesn't include the controller or the power supply. 
And that's because, um, as Andy said, those are some of the most common replacement parts are controllers and power supplies. Whereas an AC pump simply doesn't have those, it just plugs right on in. So you're gonna sacrifice that controllability, some of that silence for an overall more reliable device, um, but it's still a good option. So yeah, as Jaren was saying about the Iwaki, is since it does have such a high um, head height, you know, this is great for, you know, that complicated plumbing that people would have in their aquarium, especially that hard plumbing. As Jaren was saying, you know, trying to pump this from the basement of your house all the way up to the top, you know, this will be able to do it just because it does have that pressure. Yeah, to kind of give you an example of one of these situations, um, when I worked in the retail store, we had a coral flask, you know, just long tanks filled with coral, and they were 16 feet long, <laughs> the entire tank, two eight foot tanks end to end. And um, a lot of these pumps can't pump water 16 feet. You know, it put them at max power, the water is not gonna pump 16 feet down, you'll get a little drizzle. Mm -hmm. um, and a walkie pump is a perfect candidate for that. If you know you're gonna have to pump that far, is just really hard to beat. Um, we also used one of these in our top off reservoir. We had a top off reservoir in the back of the store and then about 75 feet away had tanks you wanted to fill with RO water and there's really not that many options for a pump that can pump water 75 feet. So yeah. um, you know, in situations like that, you're gonna find that this is a better option. And honestly, if your pump is that far away from the tank, you probably don't care about the noise because the pump's in the basement or exactly. a garage or a utility room and even though it's making more noise you're not going to hear it anyway so that's probably the true quietest option but it just isn't a reality for a lot of us yeah so jared what you're telling me is the lifeguard quiet one it's your more budget friendly but it'll get the job done but it's not necessarily all that quiet and then if you're looking for something that has more controllability and saves on electricity, you'd go for the Rosemont Riser or the various four, as long as you don't, it's just a little bit more money, or it's yeah. like more mid-range. Then if you don't mind, if you don't mind the loudness and you actually want durability and and you need head pressure. Yes. Actually, you would want to go with the I walk. And that's right. And again, we like to have a good, better, and best. This quiet one is a good pump. We generally see the, the riser as a, um, a better pump. And then either these Varios or the Oaki is kind of the best options depending on what you want. Um, we have all these because we have all kinds of customers. And I know sometimes I don't want to buy a $300 pump. Um, you know, when I want to mix my salt water, I'm going to buy a quiet one pump. But I just don't think it means that much. But you know, in my living room where I want to be quiet, I'm going to choose this. And in my frag system with bazillions of dollars in frags, yep. I'm going to choose something reliable. So there's something for everybody to choose based on what you're looking for and hopefully this makes it a bit easier.